We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. All right, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight for our latest episode of FRC Deep Dive. Uh, Deep Dive uncovers what makes some of the best teams in FRC successful so that you can improve your own team. Uh, tonight we have some amazing giveaways. 118 has been gracious enough to not only give us their time tonight to be on the show, uh, but they've also provided some amazing Robonauts merch. Uh, I'm going to have our producer, Tyler, explain how the giveaways work and how you can win. Yeah, definitely. So we have two separate giveaways. One is uh, for the T-shirt, and then the other one's going to be for a T-shirt and a hat. Um, so we'll do the T-shirt first, T-shirt, and the hat afterwards. If you're interested in winning, pretty simple. All you have to do is make sure you click that follow button, stay up to date, on first updates now content i uh, and then there's gonna be a keyword for you to type in which i forgot to ask 118 for so we might put them on the spot in a little bit uh for that um and then afterwards once again type in the keyword go ahead and wait and uh, we'll draw a winner for that hey guess what if you're interested in getting five times luck help fun stay loud live and independent Help us out with that sub. You guys know Twitch Prime, Twitch Prime, Twitch Prime, or, you know, just a few bucks a month. We appreciate it. We rely on you guys to keep us loud, live, and independent, and can't wait for a great show with our friends at 118. All right. So we have talked to some of the most successful teams in first on Deep Dive so far, most recently 1619, uh, 148, and 254. Uh, but tonight we have us with us another one of the elite teams from the great state of Texas, uh, the 2015 World Champions, and they are tied for the fifth most blue banners in first history with 36 overall. This is 118, the Robonauts. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. And if you don't mind, could we start with a quick introduction uh, with the students and maybe tell us what grade you're in, uh, what roles you have on the team, and what you're most excited to talk about tonight? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm Casey. I'm a junior and a third-year veteran on the team, and I am one of our leads on our intake subsystem. Hi, I'm Esther. I'm also a junior, and this is my third year on the team. I'm this year's team captain, and I work on our climb subsystem and chairmans. Parker? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Parker Francis. Uh, I'm a mechanical mentor on the team, um, and I run the pit during competition season. All right, so we're going to get uh, we're gonna get started by knowing, getting to know a little bit more about 118, uh, but later on during the show, we'll, we will be asking some questions that were submitted by you, the audience, uh, via Discord, uh, Chief Delphi, etc., and we will also take some questions submitted live in the chat throughout the show. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask 118, uh, post it in the chat and tag at first updates now. Uh, and we will try to ask as many as we have time for. We have a lot to get through, so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to start out with some basics, so uh, maybe you guys could tell us kind of how your team is organized and structured as far as um, personnel, roles, and how just different aspects of the team are covered. So real quick intro about the Robonauts. We are a team of 60 students from six high schools within our district. That's Clear Creek Independent School District in Houston, Texas. So something about um, kind of our team as a whole is that it's kind of a unique aspect is that everyone touches the robot. We don't have a specific group for just chairmen or just um, catting or media or anything like that. We have everyone touching the robot and that kind of lets people say at the end of the at the end of the season, hey, like this this is the robot I built, this is the robot I did. And of course we do split up into mechanical subsystems and software subsystems and stuff like that. So we have like base and end game and intake every year, but we everyone always touches the robot so we can all learn those aspects of the whole team. Yep. So we structure ourselves based on what we call a flat organization, meaning that mentors and students have the same voice, like no one is prioritized over the other. And all of our decisions are consensus based. All of our like major decisions, we never do like votes by majority. We take the time to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that really feeds into like making unified actions as a team. Uh, following NASA culture, we have little crews that we call. So like Casey said, we like everyone participates and contributes to the robot, but we do have separate like competition teams. Like our flight crew is our drive team and our pit crew works in the pit. Our launch crew does like awards and stuff like that. And so people kind of uh, specialize into those roles, but at the end of the day, everyone works on the robot in some way. As for leadership specifically, I'm this year's team captain, and that's a person nominated by the team and then selected by um, mentors and the team captain is more of a unitary role uh, on the team kind of like a bridge between students and mentors and just making sure that like communication is always enforced and that our team's goals are enforced 
aside from that, uh, we have some competition roles, like our chief engineer, they're the person who leads in the pit, they run full functionals, and just make sure like everything robot-wise is good to go. We also have our scouting captains, sometimes we have more than one, and they lead the scouting, the data collection, and strategy at our competitions. So we really have like special students that take like ownership of these roles at competition, and this kind of leadership feeds in over the years, and we have a really great structure with that. Awesome. So uh, moving on to uh, funding, and so and how do you guys approach funding for your team, and is it mainly sponsorship-based or fundraising, and, and what goes into that, and how do you guys go about making that happen? Yeah, so fortunately, um, Team 118's uh, a, a NASA house team, uh, supplemented by a few smaller sponsors. Um, so house teams are a little bit different than a NASA grant team. Um, each space center has um, a few house teams. Um, some well-known examples, for instance, uh, is the pink team out of uh, Kennedy Space Center, um, Spartan Robotics, and the Space Cookies out of NASA Ames. Um, and then the, the house teams out of Johnson Space Center are uh, Team 118, uh, Team Paradox out of Pearland, uh, 231 High Voltage out of Pasadena, and the newly formed uh, 118 sister team in our own school district, uh, Team 324 Chips. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, we have uh, a student fee. Uh, you, can, you can cover the student fees part. Uh. Yeah, so uh, not everything is paid by like NASA or anything. We do have student fees. We pay $300 per student to our booster club, and this fee like covers like uniforms, food that they bring during the build season, like any quick purchases we might need. And we really love our booster club. It's made of a group of really amazing parents, and they always help us out in so many different ways. And our parents are just a really great part of our Robonauts family that we really emphasize through the year. Cool. And then moving on to maybe some like education and training related uh, topics. So how do you guys handle team training and how do you educate, especially your newer students on the team every season? So uh, so we, have, we aren't a team that is a full year team. We are um, an off season and an, an actual season. So for our off season, we have fall classes and open time for us to come in and build. So we have fall classes like CADing and software just to kind of get our new students and our even students who don't know what, like how to CAD or how to, um, what software is, we get them and we have um, classes in order to teach them in the, in the off season. We also have open build time to come in and kind of work side by side with a mentor or anyone to build whatever you're thinking, whatever you want to design. And so after that, we have right leading up to kickoff, right before kickoff, we have something we call station to station. And station to station is um, for mainly the rookies who are coming in and who don't know a lot. So there's different stations that we rotate through. So there's CADing, there's software, just like in the off season, but there's also like where things are and how to rivet and what, um, what old subsystems are like and what's and what different kind of, how to build mechanically. And so we do that and that really acclimates the rookies into what the new system and what the robots really are like. And so that's before the, right before the season starts. And during the season, we have a kind of side-by-side -side relationships with um, mentors and students and rookies and veterans. So veterans are a big part of teaching our rookies and they teach CAD and they teach kind of everything that goes on in the, in the team as a whole. So if we're broaching or if we're um, CADing something, um, a veteran will pull a rookie, pull a rookie to, do, to do whatever they're doing. So they learn and they teach and they get to learn what's happening um, on, on whatever they're doing that day. And mentors kind of do the same exact thing, but it all is kind of a learning, a learning culture towards everyone. And on that, on that note of culture, um, we have a really open kind of discussion culture um, um, here at the Robonauts. We are super encouraged. We super encourage asking questions and talking and um, everyone's valued on this team. So we talk a lot. We talk a lot about all ideas, no matter how silly, no matter how um, crazy they are, because they can always stem to be something even greater. And that's kind of how we get our robot and we get our season going. Awesome. And so then moving on, I guess, to uh, what kinds of things do you guys do during the season and in the off season? Uh, so both to kind of help other teams in your community. So outside of 
kind of what you just talked about, but then expanding to other teams in the area and just the community overall? So we do a lot both off season and during the season. Some general community outreach we do is like robot demos and STEM workshops, which we host at the local mall and local libraries. Uh, we especially have a really great relationship with the Microsoft store at the local mall. And we just have like general robot demos there because not everyone is able to like say like learn robotics in school or go to robotics camp, but just going to like an everyday location and being engaged in robotics there and like an everyday location just really like opens our scope of engagement with the community. In addition to that, especially within our district, we host a bunch of VEX EDR and IQ tournaments. This year, especially the VEX uh, EDR Space City Tourney, which we hosted, was the largest VEX competition in the state of Texas. And coming up, we have the South State Championships for both VEX IQ and VEX EDR that we're hosting as well. And in addition to that, within our district, we mentor younger teams. Uh, our district has been growing for a while in terms of robotics, and it's really exciting to see that growth, knowing that we've been a part of it. This year, there's around 75 VEX IQ teams, which are like fourth and fifth graders, and Robonauts mentor just about everyone. And that's really important to our goal of engaging students in engineering before stereotypes take hold. Can you and guys, uh, sorry, just real quick, can you maybe guys talk a little bit about um, why you guys focus on VEX, EDR, and IQ, as opposed to maybe doing like FLL and FTC? So VEX EDR and VEX IQ is what our district has decided to implement. They made the decision a couple years ago, and we've just supported it in any way we can because we understand that robotics and engineering above everything else is most important. Definitely. Yeah. And so um, in regards to helping out other FRC teams, one initiative that we really like have a lot of pride in is our Everybody initiative. So we understand like not everyone necessarily has enough resources to build a really competitive robot and that should never be a limitation. So we dedicate an effort to create and design a robot within the first week after kickoff that's made up of materials totaling under a thousand dollars, which are just stuff that you can get from your kit of parts or stuff from Home Depot. So, and we um, upload all of our CAD and our software to our website for people to download for free. Everyone has access to the designs. And so this enables people to create a robot that's simple, it's affordable, it's robust, and most of all, it's competitive, and they don't have to spend a lot of money doing it. And so this program has gotten a lot of growth. Just last year, 87 teams created an Everbot, and of those 87, 26 qualified for district champs, 15 qualified for worlds, and 13 won blue banners. So 87 Everbot teams won 111 awards in 2019. That's incredible. Yeah. Fantastic. And then, uh, the last one we would like to mention is our R cubed effort. It stands for Robonauts Robot Rescue. And so it's just like when we go to competitions and sometimes there are rookie teams that like need a little bit of mechanical help, often enough like not everyone can get inspected in time for like minor things like bumpers or whatever and they just need a few extra hands. So we just dedicate our time and resources to making that effort happen so that everyone at least has the right to compete in the game. Awesome. Uh, all that sounds super helpful to the community. Uh, I really like the robot, Robonauts uh, Robot Rescue. It kind of reminds me of um, what uh, an earlier team that was on our show, uh, Citrus Circuits, uh, 1678. Most people probably know them. I know they do something really similar uh, at their events as well. Uh, and I think a couple other teams also that have been on the show have done that. So uh, it seems to be a common theme across a lot of teams uh, that come on the show. So Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.